Today, Michael's building me a mud closet. <clears throat> so the first thing we needed to do was sand the existing trim to remove the glossy finish. This will allow the paint to stick to the surface. If you ever painted trim that was previously stained and coated with a glossy finish, you may have noticed places where the paint just peels right off. It's because the finish will prevent the paint from bonding to the surface and will ultimately leave you with a less desired look. A quick wipe down and vacuuming to clean up the dust and we were ready for Wendy to put on a couple coats of paint to the inside trim. We figured it would be easier to paint this trim now since the rest of the mud closet wasn't installed and in our way. Once the paint was dried, it was time to install the IKEA shelf units. We didn't film the assembly of the shelf units, but anyone who's bought from IKEA knows that their instructions are pretty clear and understandable, so we left that part out. We decided to use two of these units, one laying horizontally to be used as the bench, and one vertically for extra storage. As with any lightweight furniture, it's important to mount them to the wall with some sort of bracket. I'm using these larger L brackets to get the extra length I needed because the trim inside the closet prevents the storage shelves from sitting flush against the wall. It's a pretty simple process. I like to hold the bracket in place while penciling a mark on the wall so I know where to drill and insert the wall anchors. Once the brackets are attached to the wall, then I just use a screwdriver with some pressure to attach the brackets with the screws directly to the shelving unit from IKEA. Now with the IKEA shelf securely attached to the walls, it's time to make the bench. I have a large pile of used wood that we inherited when we bought this house, so I dug through until I found some 2x6s that would work great for this bench. I needed to measure and cut three pieces to the same length so I could later glue them together, but since the boards were already used and had some holes drilled through and old pencil lines, I didn't realize I lined up the third board to an old line and I cut the board way too short. It's pretty important to pay attention so you don't make a mistake like I did. But at least I had one more 2x6 in that pile, so I was able to cut that third piece that I needed. Unfortunately, I don't own a joiner, so I got the boards cleaned up in as square as possible by running them through the planer on each side. Once the boards were cleaned up and it was time for glue, I made sure to get a nice even coat of glue on all three edges by using a disposable foam brush. This is the first time I've ever attempted to glue boards together like this to create a wider piece of wood. And I'm guessing since I don't have a joiner, the joining faces weren't perfectly square, so I ended up getting some mismatch at the seams of the board. I figured I would just sand them out to blend after the glue was dried. So when the glue was dried, I unclamped the wood and began sanding the seams to blend everything. With the sanding out of the way, I got all the final dimensions from the bench and cut the slab to length. Next, Wendy and I needed to mount the backboard to the wall for the hooks to be mounted to. We originally planned on just buying solid wood and painting it white, but when we were shopping we found melamine shelves were a little bit cheaper than the solid wood, plus it was already white, so you know we got to skip that step. The board needed to be cut to length, so we put it into position and marked where to cut it. After it was cut to the proper length, we marked our studs, pre-drilled, then screwed the board to the wall, making sure to have them securely screwed into the studs will allow more weight to be hung on the shelves. Next came the top shelf. We used the same melamine shelf material for the same reason, and we only had to cut it to length to make it fit, so not having to paint at the end really saved us a lot of time. For the support on the side wall, there weren't any studs to screw into, so I just used a couple of heavy-duty drywall anchors. To fill in the screw holes, I just grabbed what I had in the garage, and that was drywall spackling. I don't see it being an issue, but if it doesn't hold up, I'll let everyone know in a future video. I used a damp cloth to remove the excess spackling, and it was time to let it dry. Wendy wanted to give the hooks a little more style, so she created a mandala and illustrator that'll sit behind each hook. Once they were cut out on our laser, it was time for a quick sanding and then stain. You can see here how we included the hole location and the shape of the hook to make it easier to mount once the mandalas were glued into place. Wendy then proceeded to stain the bench and the two side shelves and mounting strips since she was already staining the mandalas. With all the stained pieces drying, it was time to sand the spackling and then paint to hide the mounting holes. In order to place the hooks and mandalas right where we wanted them, 
We made a template on the laser that perfectly spaces and holds them level with one another. We just had to tape it flush with the bottom of the board that was already leveled earlier when we mounted it to the studs. Wendy attached the mandalas to the board with a little bit of super glue in order to hold them in place so I could then come through and pre-drill all the screw holes for mounting the hooks. With all the holes drilled, it was time to drive the screws in and mount all the hooks. Wendy removed the template we used and at this point the project was really starting to come together and look good. So we pre-drilled the rails that are going to be up here to hold the side shelves. We also counterboard it so the head of the screw would be below the surface. This allows us to put screws into the holes and have them poking out a little bit out the back. So then when you put it up on the wall and it's in the right position, you can press in on them and it'll leave two little marks on the wall so we know exactly where to drill for the wall anchors. Then we just attach them to the wall. The next step we had to do was finish painting up the trim. We gave that to Wendy because she's really fast at it and she has a really good eye for making sure it looks nice. She's actually probably just about done now. Well, I'm done. What do you think? Well, the paint looks really good. Thank you. It looks really good. I think it might be missing one thing though. What's that? Oh yeah, I do like that. Much better. That's a good touch. What do you say we piece this thing together now? All right, let's do it. And there it is. Our mud closet project is complete. Wendy and I love how it turned out. It was a lot of fun designing and putting this mud closet together. And I'd say this project is pretty easy and most people would be able to complete without any issues. Hopefully this video inspires you to do something with that boring entry closet in your home, or at the very least motivates you to get started on some other project that you've had sitting on the back burner. Wendy and I sat on this project for several months before finally carving out a weekend to get it done. Totally worth it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It helps us know if our videos are going in the right direction. And if you would like to see more DIY projects, subscribe to our channel because Wendy and I are both get shit done kind of people and we'll be putting out more videos in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. You gotta, st oh no, the whole thing. What? When we snap back, that's the side that shows no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> Just glue it up. We'll steer into it. Yeah, you can, I'll, I'll be like. I'll be like this. Oh yeah, that looks I'll go, good. And I'll you'll go. be like, what? You snap some paint on me? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I got paint on me. Oh my goodness. It is what it is? Yeah. All right.